Hi guys, it's me, Trudy Lee. How's everybody doing? I know everybody's been wondering where I am. Let me put my microphone a little closer. I have been sick <laughs> and my voice isn't completely back yet. I lost my voice for the last few days. Um, it's coming back now, but I'm going to make a short video. If I make it too long, I might lose my voice completely. It's coming back pretty good right now. But um, I hope everybody is nice and warm and the cold air has passed already. I don't know. In some places, it's still really, really cold. We've been having very warm weather. Today, it got a little bit cooler. It's about 73 degrees today. So it's, it's nice and warm. But it's been like 85 plus. It's almost up to 90 on, on a couple of days last week. So this past week, I have been sick since um, the weekend. I've been sick for a whole week, you guys. I can't believe it. So the last time that I talked to you guys, I was telling you all about grounding my energy. And I'd been going outside and grounding my energy and feeling really good. My neck was feeling good. Every time I would sit outside on the grass with my feet and hands, my neck wouldn't hurt. My back wouldn't hurt. I was feeling excellent, excellent. So let me tell you all, you need to listen to your intuition. Follow your intuition. When your intuition tells you something, listen to it. Because I didn't, and I know better, but you know, I'm going to blame my husband because he's the one I blame for everything that goes wrong. <laughs> Poor Johnny. So me and Johnny go to the grocery store. And whenever we go to the grocery store, we always park in the same spot. You know, because when you're old, you can't find your car and you don't want to be that dumb old person that's looking for their car. So we always park in the same spot. I always tell him, you got to park here so I can find the car. So I'm, I always grab one of those little carts. You know, they have like two different sizes now. I always get a small cart from the parking lot and I bring one in. Um, I, 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 I just do. Uh, instead of going and getting a fresh one, I just bring one in with me. So I, I have a habit of doing that every time. As we're pulling in, there's a lady and she's putting back one of these little carts, you know. <clears throat> I got the most grossed out feeling. I don't know why. I was just completely grossed out. I did not want to touch that cart. And I told Johnny, I said, um, I I'm going to get a cart in. And, he, and I, start, I just walked by the carts. And he goes, don't you want this cart? And I said, no, I, I'm, I'll get one inside. And he said, no, why don't you get one here? And I go, I feel grossed out, okay? I just feel grossed out. That lady just had her hands on the cart. I don't know. And he goes, everybody that put a cart here had their hands on the cart, Trudy. It's, not, it's no different than any other time that we come to the grocery store. So he brings, you know, he gives me the cart. So I took it. <laughs> knowing that I felt grossed out. But when I got into the grocery store, you know, over to the cart section, the grocery store, I got a wipe and I wiped off the handle of the cart. Um, and two days later, I was sick, y'all. <laughs> and it's Johnny's fault. Now, next time I go to the grocery store and I feel gross with the cart, I am not touching it at all. So I woke up like two days later with that low back ache. I had a flu shot this year too, well, last year, so it was a few months back, but I had the flu shot, and <clears throat> I don't know if it was maybe a milder form of the flu, I don't know what it is, I woke up with a really bad backache, it was hurting me all day, and the next day I woke up, and my throat was real sore, and it just got more and more sore, and uh, I never had like when you have the flu, you have like a really bad headache. And even when you cough, your whole head feels like it's about to explode. I didn't have that. So I had a very mild temperature, like 99.7. Uh, it never got any higher than that. But it got, you know, lots of, lots of uh, snot. <laughs> so I had lots of that and uh, uh, lots of choking and coughing and things like that. And I took so much medication that my stomach was hurting you know you take so much just so so you can sleep at night I like to take Alka-Seltzer Plus cold that's my favorite go-to but it has aspirin in it so it bothers my stomach but I took quite a bit of that <clears throat> just to be able to sleep you know 
Anyway, so I'm getting to the end of it, and sorry I haven't been uh, making any videos, but that's the reason why. So I'll be making some more videos. Come Monday, I'll be making the new videos. So I'm going to give myself a couple more days to get over this stuff, and I'll be back on track. So sorry, you guys, I haven't been there. Oh, did y'all watch the Murdaugh trial? Since, you know, I wasn't doing any talking and not much working. I did help my husband paint the deck a little bit, but I just couldn't do it. I felt exhausted. I felt so tired. I helped him a little while and I was like, can't do this. I got to go lay down. I slept a lot, but I did watch the Murdaugh trial here and there. You know, I was watching it because I had nothing else to do, but just lay there and try to feel better. And, uh, Three hours they had a verdict. In three hours, the jury came back with guilty. So, wow, that was that was awesome. So, six weeks of trial, three hours, he's guilty. I can't believe what a horrible person that is. I can't believe anybody could do that to somebody. I mean, it seemed like he had a loving relationship with his whole family. You know, people testified. You never know somebody, the true heart of another person. Was he just faking it the whole time? You know? It's awful. There's there's terrible people in this world. It's really scary. Anyway, that's what I did. I just watched I watched the trial off and on. I haven't really been watching anything else. It would play. I'd go to sleep and hear it. So I don't know if you guys were following it, but it was very interesting, that's for sure. And my husband was like, oh, he killed him. He did it. He's going, you know, my husband didn't even need to watch any of it. He was like, he killed his you know, wife and child. And, you know, after the timeline that they did on the the phones, uh, the OnStar and all that, they had it to where somebody would have had to be over there within a couple of minutes of him coming and going. He wouldn't have seen him or heard a shot. If somebody shot your whole family on your property, I'm pretty sure you'd hear the gunshot because here people sometimes shoot guns and, you know, this was an automatic weapon that shot that lady several times. If I hear one gunshot, and I mean, it, it, it can be far away, I can hear it. You know, it echoes. You can hear a gunshot. So if somebody was shooting, he would have heard it for sure. And he would have ran to the kennels to see what happened to his family. So, yeah, it was, that's an awful thing. Awful, awful. So anyway, that's what I did. So... I hope you guys are staying warm. I hope the weather has changed and all this cold air blows out. I know there was another system. Oh, an update on Baby Lane. Let me tell you all about Baby Lane while we're talking. Uh, Baby Lane did get moved. I told you all it got moved to uh, Texas Children's Hospital. They found out his eyes are okay. Remember they were saying they weren't sure if he could see. Now the problem with his brain is... He does have brain damage. They're not sure if he can interpret what he's seeing, but his eyes are working and he's able to track light and see. So they don't think he has an issue. His, his eyes aren't damaged, put it that way. But he is going to have to um, be fed by a tube for quite a long time. I don't know how long, but they're, Monday he's having surgery, surgery to put a permanent feeding tube into his stomach. I think it's called a GT tube or something. So he's having surgery on Monday. So I would appreciate it if you, you know, say a prayer for baby Lane for Monday for his procedure to go smoothly. He still needs more surgery on his colon. He, they found out that his urine is going into his colon. He's going to need a colostomy, uh, um, pretty soon. So they've got that scheduled. I don't know. Pretty That's coming up pretty soon too. It's going to be a big surgery and um, they can, you know, reverse that in like six months after he heals and everything. So I don't know. They'll, they'll decide whether they're going to reverse it or not, depending on uh, how he progresses, I guess, in the next few months. So uh, after they put the feeding tube in, and, um, oh, he's also having a problem with, have you ever heard of dystonia? It's where your muscles can contract and, you know, like a body part move. So he has it in his neck. He has dystonia. 
and it's been very, very painful for him. He's not been able, like the last 24 hours, I got a message from my sister that he wasn't even able to sleep the last 24 hours. The muscles in his neck are spasming so bad, and it's causing his head to turn left, and he's so uncomfortable and crying. So they're trying some different kind of medications to help with that. Um, they do things for adults for dystonia, and that's Botox, but they don't, they've never done that in infants, so they don't want to you know, do Botox in an infant because they don't know how he's going to react. But they're trying um, a different medication for his seizures and seeing if that will help with the dystonia also. So because of uh, the dystonia, they're, they're not going to be able to release him you know, to go home until they get that under control because he's very uncomfortable. So we'll see how that goes after he gets his feeding tube in and uh, he'll, he'll probably, if they get that under control, he'll be able to go home. So maybe, maybe soon he'll be able to go home. Uh, his father is um, looking for a job. He's got some jobs lined up. So I think he's an agriculture teacher. Uh, they're, they're in Houston now, of course, and she also has some jobs lined up, too. She's a veterinarian. She just uh, graduated and got her veterinarian uh, degree, so she's a doctor. So she's. they both have to work, you know. Thank you so much for all the donations that they received. They never, I don't think, made it up quite up to $20,000, but whatever they received is going to be very helpful to them and getting, you know, getting them on with their you know, new life here in, in Houston. So I say here, they're three hours away. So I, I'll probably be able to go to Houston pretty soon and visit her and see how, see the baby and see how she's doing. So I'm looking forward to that when I get well. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's an update on Baby Lane. He's making some progress and, you know, having some problems too, but God bless him. Um, he does have a lot of brain damage, um, that, but they're just hoping that the brain can heal and reroute. So, you know, miracles happen. The brain can reroute and reheal, you know, and he can learn how to do things just with a different pathway. So anything is possible. So prayers are needed. Thank you so much for them. Appreciate it. Love you guys. I'm going to say goodbye for now. And uh, thank you so much for all your comments, concerns on your prayers and your love for baby lane. I appreciate it. And for myself also, thank you. I'll talk to y'all on Monday. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to let you go for my voice totally fades out now. Bye for now.